So Ubiquiti just released the Enterprise Fortress Gateway, their entrance into the Enterprise Gateway market. And we have one. Not only are we going to unbox it, we're going to deploy it. But not here in our studio. We're actually in Chattanooga, Tennessee at Socially You, And we're going to deploy this EFG here. Of course, you guys know Matthew. He's holding our new EFG. And this is Morgan, their studio engineer. Morgan, you guys have been running a Unify network for a while, right? We sure have. We've been running the full Ubiquity stack from switching to the NVR to the Dream Machine. But we're really just kind of hitting the upper limit of what the Dream Machine can accomplish for us here. And that's where the EFG is going to come in. So let's go ahead and unbox it and deploy it. So what's actually inside of the EFG? So we have 16 gigs of RAM. We have an 18 core ARM processor running at over two gigahertz. We also have two 25 gig ports for our LAN and our WAN. And we also have two 10 gig LAN ports. And around the back here, we have two hot swappable redundant 150 watt power supplies. So a lot of you guys are probably wondering, why does Video Production House need such a powerful gateway like the EFG? I mean, sure, they need a powerful gateway because video files are big, but one that can handle 5,000 plus users. And while the EFG is going to be a great deployment for those large environments, it also is a good use case for high performance environments, which is exactly what they're doing here at the studio. And Matt, if you want to go ahead and start that file transfer, we've got a number of things cooking right now. In addition to downloading a large 80 gigabyte file from Dropbox, actually two different files, and doing a number of local transfers, we have these. These are Hyperdex, and they are not recording to these local SSDs. They're connected to cameras out in the studio, and they're actually going out over a 10 gigabit port connecting to switching, which is going to their TrueNAS scale box here. So all eight of those cameras are recording directly to TrueNAS. Now, if you look here, you'll notice that they're actually dropping frames. And the reason for that is the UDM Pro has recently given up the ghost. We've been trying to push it, and we have successfully done that. And in addition to doing local stuff, there's some other use cases. So talk me through your workflow and what you guys are looking to do. Yeah, for sure. So as you said, we've got the HyperDex down here doing the record. That's recording in ProRes, which is already a pretty heavy file to be recording across a 10 gig link to, to our NAS. Additionally, we're editing same day. So an editor is accessing the files on the NAS. We're also uploading all of that to Dropbox currently as our cloud Which is provider, gonna change. Which is gonna change eventually. And that's kind of why we're looking at getting this more powerful gateway. Like you said, in addition to all the local networking that it can handle, we're looking at a SD-WAN type solution down the road. Uh, our local ISP here has a colo ability to be able to put either our current NAS or a future NAS uh, off-site. And potentially, if we have that 25 gig link, we'll be able to just access it as if it's in our building. Which is insane. So what you could actually do is you would record on the cameras either over SDI to the HyperDex or in the future even directly over IP, and you would just send that data over the internet to a nearby colo, which would have lower latency than even being on Wi-Fi locally, which is insane, but for that, you need a lot of bandwidth to do uncompressed video. Additionally, we've done a video on our channel where we brought in a remote guest all the way from Australia. Now, their studio was limited by a one gig connection, uh, but we could see a use case where we have multiple studios, kind of like a network, feeding all of their high quality 4K IP video to us. Again, another SD-WAN type situation there. Exactly. And you know, one of the things with the, the Dream Machine Pro is it can absolutely run at 10 gigabit per second, but not with IPS enabled. Whereas the EFG, even though it is, can do full 25 gig without IPS, which is probably what you'd be doing with that data center co-location, for other types of traffic where you do want IPS enabled, we are still going to be at 12 and a half gigabits per second, which is a lot of throughput still. Yeah, for sure. Hey, let's get this thing installed in our rack. Let's rack it up. All right, so I'm joined here now with Matt, yep. and we're gonna be removing our UDM Pro. Now, it's important to point out to people, this is not a bad product. No, it, it's great. What are some use cases for a UDM Pro? It's definitely, when it comes to my mind, small, medium, and business, easy. Pop it in, you're good to go. But I think for you guys, you're kind of hitting more of that limitation, moving into the faster, needing to go up to 10, 25 gig wind speed. So it's 
it's going to sure. hit a limit for you guys. So we're going to, you know, pop it up. Like you said, yeah, it's not a bad product at all. Yeah. And for our configuration here, we've kind of got two WANs happening. We have a static IP WAN uh, that's a 500 megabit uh, connection. Mm -hmm. And then we have our two and a half gigabit connection, which down the line can be upgraded all the way up to 25 gig. Yep. Uh, and then we've got our, uh, our DAC cable here that's connecting down to our um, ag pro aggregate switch right here. Yep. So all of this is just going to plug right in to yep. plug and play. To it. So that's Pop great. Pop the old config off, put it in. And we've already done a backup, so that's all good to go. Yep, yep, we got so. our cloud backup, so we should be good. Great. Well, I'm going to hand you the drill here. I'm going to reach around back and unplug it. Yeah. All right, so with Matt's help here, we've got this all installed. It's ready to go. Something I noticed about this box, there's no hard drive on the front here, but it yep. still has a controller built in on this model in particular. Strictly just a gateway and controller for network. That's okay. it. Great. And then now we're going to go and set it up, right? Yep. Let's get all to right. it. Let's do it. Now, because we're moving from a UDM Pro, the process of migrating is actually quite simple. We just backed up our configuration to the cloud, did a local copy just to be safe, and then restored it to the Fortress. And now we can go ahead and run the same test that we did before. Now, remember, the first time we ran this test on the UDM Pro, the graph got to about 90%, 95%, and then we lost access to the console. So any improvement beyond that is certainly going to be a plus. But Morgan, let's go ahead and execute those tests. Now, just a reminder on our testing methodology, we are recording on eight Hyperdex, and we are not recording locally. These are just here, but we are recording to the TrueNAS scale box right here over the network. And in addition to recording on these eight Hyperdex on ProRes, we are also doing several file transfers on the WAN site, not only from Dropbox, running speed test, and actually to be, have a little bit of fun, we're doing a few more of those transfers than we were before. Now remember, with the UDM Pro, we were dropping frames, and we're not right now. We also couldn't even log into Unify. We were at about 99% utilization uh, on the CPU and memory usage, and then we lost access to the controller. So Matt, how are we doing in Unify now? So taking a look at our results over here on the graph, uh, we were running almost sustaining a full gig on the WAN side, and then we were running, we looked in the net graph, and we saw over six gigs to the NAS internally while running the external speed tests and pulling things down from Dropbox. So I said we were running even more than the first tests and we were getting better results, staying our CPU usage under 30%. It definitely helped offloading some of those apps onto the UNVR. Um, and we were just running our network app and just the general gateway functionality. Um, and a lot of our bottleneck too was due to the fact that the UDM Pro only had four gigs on board. You could see we were kind of running in the red on the first test to begin with, let alone trying to push it through everything that we were giving it. So I say it was a success. We ran harder and further and longer on this, you know, obviously due to the added amount of CPU and RAM in the uh, EFG. So I say it was a great test, obviously a good success. The HyperDAX didn't freak out, no dropping, no nothing. Everything was perfect. So Cody, we finished up the install. We've done some performance testing. This thing has a lot of power to it. There's plenty of room for Ubiquiti to come out with more security features in the future, more enhanced IPS or intrusion protection, and there's plenty of capacity room. So you guys can go to, you know, we're, we have a two and a half gig connection right now. We're struggling to kind of max out and hurt, uh, put a hurting on the EFG. So if you guys want to go to 10 gig or 25 gig in the future, or move some servers into a colo, when maybe more advanced functionality with SD-WAN, or even more remote video production, the capacity exists there. That's amazing. Like, we're so excited to explore those options as they come about.
By the way, thank you for having us out here. We oh, stumbled across you, you thank guys. Thank you for coming. Yeah, we find you guys on YouTube. And if you guys have not already, go ahead and subscribe to the Socially You YouTube channel. I'll have a link for it down in the description. You guys have a ton of great content there. Yeah. And you are incredible videographers, which is super awesome to see. And what about our questions for all the sysadmins? Out yes, there? if you are a sysadmin, I have a question for you guys. I have a couple questions for you guys. But I want to know, are you going to deploy the EFG? Why or why not? For those of you that are running Unify in your stack, maybe you have all Unify switching, all Unify APs, but you're running a different head because the UDM Pro just isn't cutting it for your size of environment, are you going to switch to the EFG? Let us know down in the comments below. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.